With the gift of mind and speech, you create the conditions and circumstances of life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word, said Hermes, is Son, and mind is Father of the Word. They are not separate one from the other, for life is the union of Word and mind. You and your inner talking or Word are one. If your mind is one with your inner conversation, then to be transformed in mind is to be transformed in conversation. It was a flash of the deepest insight that taught Paul to write, Put off the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man. Put on the new man and be renewed in the spirit of your mind is to change your inner conversation. For speech and mind are one. A change of speech is a change of mind. The prophet Samuel said, The Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. If the Lord's word was in the prophet's tongue, then the Lord's mouth that uttered the word must be the prophet's mind. For inner conversations originate in the mind and produce little tiny speech movements in the tongue. The prophet is telling us, that the mouth of God is the mind of man, that our inner conversations are the word of God, creating life about us as we create it within ourselves. In the Bible you are told that the word is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil, blessings and curses. Choose life. The conditions and circumstances of life are not created by some power external to yourself. They are the conditions which result from the exercise of your freedom of choice, your freedom to choose the ideas to which you will respond. Now is the accepted time. This is the day of salvation. Whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. For your future will be formed by the word of God which is your present inner talking. You create your future by your inner conversation. The worlds were framed by the word of God, that is, your inner talking. See on the fields, the sesame was sesame, the corn was corn, the silence and the darkness knew, so is a man's fate born, for ends run true to origin. If you will reap success, you must plant success. The idea in your mind which starts the whole process going is the idea which you accept as true. This is a very important point to grasp. For truth depends upon the intensity of imagination, not upon facts. When the girl imagined that her employer was unfair, his behavior confirmed her imagination. When she changed her assumption of it, his behavior reflected the change, proving that an assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. The mind always behaves according to the assumption with which it starts. Therefore, to experience success, we must assume that we are successful. We must live wholly on the level of the imagination itself and it must be consciously and deliberately undertaken. It does not matter if, at the present moment, external facts deny the truth of your assumption. If you persist in your assumption, it will become a fact. Signs follow. They do not precede. To assume a new concept of yourself is, to that extent, to change your inner talking or word of God and is therefore putting on the new man. Our inner talking, though unheard by others, is more productive of future conditions than all the audible promises and threats of men. Your ideal is waiting to be incarnated, but unless you yourself offer it human parentage, it is incapable of birth. You must define the person you wish to be, and then assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled, in faith that that assumption will find expression through you. 
The true test of religion is in its use, but men have made it a thing to defend. It is to you that the words are spoken. Blessed is she that believe, for there shall be an accomplishment of those things which are spoken unto her from the law. Test it. Try it. Conceive yourself to be one that you want to be. And remain faithful to that conception, for life here is only a training ground for image making. Try it and see if life will not shape itself on the model of your imagination. Everything in the world bears witness of the use or misuse of man's inner talking. Negative inner talking, particularly evil and envious inner talking, are the breeding ground of the future battlefields and penitentiaries of the world. Through habit, man has developed a secret affection for these negative inner conversations. Through them, he justifies failure, criticizes his neighbor, gloats over the distress of others, and in general, pours out his venom on all. Such misuse of the word perpetuates the violence of the world. The transformation of self requires that we meditate on a given phrase, a phrase which implies that our ideal is realized and inwardly affirm it over and over and over again until we are inwardly affected by its implication, until we are possessed by it. Hold fast to your noble inner convictions or conversations. Nothing can take them from you but yourself. Nothing can stop them from becoming objective facts. All things are generated out of your imagination by the word of God, which is your own inner conversation. And every imagination reaps its own words, which it has inwardly spoken. The great secret of success is a controlled inner conversation from premises of fulfilled desire. The only price you pay for success is the giving up of your former conversation which belongs to the old man, the unsuccessful man. The time is ripe for many of us to take conscious charge in creating heaven on earth. To consciously and voluntarily use our imagination to inwardly hear and say only that which is in harmony with our ideal is actively bringing heaven to earth. Every time we exercise our imagination lovingly on behalf of another, we are literally mediating God to that one. Always use your imagination masterfully as a participant, not an onlooker. In using your imagination to transform energy from the mental, emotional level to the physical level, extend your senses. Look and imagine that you are seeing what you want to see, that you are hearing what you want to hear, and touching what you want to touch become intensely aware of doing so. Give your imaginary state all the tones and feeling of reality. Keep on doing so until you arouse within yourself the mood of accomplishment and the feeling of relief. This is the active, voluntary use of the imagination, as distinguished from the passive, involuntary acceptance of appearances. It is by this active, voluntary use of the imagination that the second man, the Lord from heaven, is awakened in man. Men call imagination a plaything, the dream faculty. But actually, it is the very gateway of reality. Imagination is the way to the state desired. It is the truth of the state desired and the life of that state desired. Could you realize this fully, then would you know that what you do in your imagination is the only important thing. Within the circle of our imagination, the whole drama of life is being enacted over and over again. Through the bold and active use of the imagination, we can stretch out our hand and touch a friend 10,000 miles away and bring help and wealth 
through the parched lips of his being. It is the way to everything in the world. How else could we function beyond our fleshly limitations? But imagination demands of us a fuller living of our dreams in the present. Through the portals of the present, the whole of time must pass. Imagine elsewhere as here, and then as now. Try it and see. You can always tell if you succeeded in making the future dream a present fact by observing your inner talking. If you are inwardly saying what you would audibly say, were you physically present and physically moving about in that place, then you have succeeded. And you could prophesy from these inner conversations and from the moods which they awaken within you what your future will be. For one power alone makes a prophet, imagination, the divine vision. All that we meet is our word made visible. And what we do not now comprehend is related by affinity to the unrecognized forces of our own inner conversation and the moods which they arouse within us. If we do not like what is happening to us, it is a sure sign that we are in need of a change of mental diet. For man, we are told, lives not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And having discovered the mouth of God to be the mind of man, a mind which lives on words or inner talking, we should feed into our mind only loving, noble thoughts. For with words or inner talking, we build our world. Let love's lordly hand raise your hunger and thirst to all that is noble and of good report. And let your mind star, ere you raise your hand to a cup love did not fill, or a bowl love did not bless. That you may never again have to say, what have I said? What have I done? O all-powerful human world.